Hey everybody, Aaron Zamso from FireRescueFitness.com. If you are like most first responders and you have some joint pain, some aches in your knees and shoulders and back, stay tuned. I have some great tips that are going to help you move better, feel better, and alleviate some of those joint aches and muscle pains. Like most first responders, especially in today's environment, we are experiencing longer shifts, lack of sleep, high stress. Uh, we also, we carry heavy equipment. Uh, we move through the unequal planes and we twist a lot. And this can lead to a lot of joint pain, a lot of uh, knee pain, a lot of shoulder pain, a lot of just muscle pains and aches. And this is very common for, for a lot of first responders. Now, the good news is that there are some things um, that you can do to help alleviate those, those pains and uh, that will not only help you move better, perform better and feel better, but they're really easy to do and incorporate into your daily lifestyle. Now the first thing you need to do as a first responder, and uh, I really to try to place a lot of emphasis on this uh, as I begin a shift and, and as my crews begin shifts, and that is to be hydrated. Now hydration should actually start well before your actual shift. Um, it should start days before. You don't want to go into a shift being dehydrated. It can lead to not only muscle aches and pains, but it can lead to a decrease in performance, a decrease in cognitive function, and can actually increase your chances of sudden cardiac arrest and stroke. Staying well hydrated helps to lubricate your joints, helps to lubricate your muscles, which will help you move better, which can reduce chances of, of injury, um, but it also can improve your strength, um, and it just improves every metabolic function in your body, which again can then alleviate some of the inflammation. So the first thing you need to do, and uh, especially if you are feeling those aches and pains and a little bit run down and a lack of energy, is focus on hydration. Try to drink anywhere from 80 to 100 ounces of water. Now that can be more if you are sweaty and very active, um, but aim for that and uh, you will really feel the difference uh, not only in your joints, but also in your energy levels. Now the second thing you can do is to improve your mobility. Now I think a, a lot of times when I say mobility and, and maybe you thought of this as, uh, you know, pictured yourself touching your toes and you probably said, hey, I can't touch my toes. Now that's, that's different, that's flexibility. There is a difference between mobility and flexibility. Now mobility is the um, ability of muscles and tendons to move around a joint and that's more of an active uh, movement. So mobility allows your arm and your shoulder to do this or your knee to bend and flex or your hip to move or your back to move more freely. You're doing that actively. Flexibility is more of the passive side where the muscles are elongated or you are uh, passively elongating those muscles um, to allow you to move. Now, mobility really transfers on a little bit more to performance and I'm not trying to downplay flexibility, you need them both. Um, but what mobility really does, again, it adds that range of motion which can increase strength, which can alleviate some tension in, on the tendons and ligaments of, of your joints and your muscles which can then alleviate some of that pain. Um, personally, what I like to do every day and before my shifts is to incorporate my four go-to movements, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but before I do, I really wanna place emphasis. Again, we talked about the difference between mobility and flexibility. What you need to do is get moving more throughout the day, incorporate some of these uh, movements that I'll show you, um, not only into your shifts, but into your workouts. And if you're just uh, feeling tight and, and uh, tired, try to just do some movements. This actual routine, I like to call it a flow actually, where it's just four exercises. You're gonna do anywhere from three to five reps. It takes less than a minute, and you really feel your hips open up, your low back open up, and your shoulder open up. Now the first movement I like to do when I start my shifts, uh, a lot of times when I start workouts, is to just do a regular standing on one leg with good posture, a knee hug, where you're gonna bring that leg up as high as you can, and then you add a little pull. And I, again, I only do anywhere from three to five reps, depending upon how tight I am. But this is a real apical movement. If you look at the step, the better you can move that leg, the less you have to compensate to get up on that step, which then can alleviate pressure on your low back and on your shoulders as you step up 80 sometimes without a shift. So the first movement that I go to is 
a standing knee hug. Now the next movement is one that helps to open up the hips and the shoulders. It's very easy and everything starts with good posture. Head back, shoulders back. You're just gonna step back with one leg, reach up towards the ceiling and try to really, really elongate the arms. Stay braced through your uh, abs so you feel it a little bit more in the hip. All you do is step back, reach up. Again, I'm gonna do this for three reps each side and then move to the next exercise. And I try to go from one to the next to the next just to get my, my blood flowing a little bit more. And again, that then transfers to better mobility, which then leads to better performance and helps me feel better. Now the next one is one of my favorite go-tos. You've probably seen it um, uh, around uh, through a lot of firehouses, hopefully, uh, but it's a spider at man exercise with rotation. You start, and I like to put my hands down on um, the, the bench or, or on, on the, I'm sorry, on the edge of the ladder or on the step here. You can do this on the bumper, but you stay in a push-up position and what you're gonna do is step to the outside of your hand and then just rotate. Of course, you wanna do three to five each side and you wanna alternate sides. And what this is doing again is hoping, opening up the hips and the low back. You'll notice when I do these reps, I'm only doing them two or three seconds. I'm not necessarily holding them for a long time. That's more of a static stretch. And you should do that if you feel really tight after you do this little flow routine. So you start with the knee hugs, you go to the step backs, you do the Spider-Man with rotation. And then uh, I like to finish up with one that really helps um, with posture muscles of the shoulders and the hip, hips and hamstrings. And I call it a waiter's bow, which you're doing is keeping your head back with good posture, bend forward at the waist and rotate your palms up like you're presenting a platter or presenting or lifting something. But here the focus is on keeping good posture, bending at the waist and raising those arms up. That actually stretches out the lats. It gives you better flexibility and mobility in those shoulders. So this I would do anywhere from three to five again. If I feel really tight, I'll go back through this whole routine, do it you know, two or three times based on you know, how much time I have in the morning and uh, how I'm feeling. But start your day with this little mobility or flow routine, add hydration, try to find more activity and movement throughout the day, and I guarantee you'll start feeling better. You'll start, start moving better, you'll start performing better, and that will lead to better fitness down the road. And that's really what we're all about because the more fit we are, the more healthy we are, the better we can serve our communities, and our crews, and our families. I hope this helps out. Please reach out to me with any questions. I look forward to helping you and your crew get and stay fit for duty.